Hello and welcome to another Adobe Illustrator CS6 lesson that uh, we've designed for intermediate grades. This is going to be a personal reflection through computer graphics. So what you have to do is you have to draw your name and you don't get to use the text tool for this one. You have to draw it using the pen tool. And then we're going to draw some backgrounds and then we're going to save some pictures off the internet that kind of reflect uh, things about yourself and then we're going to do clipping masks with them to put them inside of a shape and then put a cool shape behind them then we're going to see if we want to use some symbols okay so let's get started first thing you're going to do is you're going to go file and new and we're going to call this personal reflection and in this new document here you can do portrait which is an up and down page so that's eight and a half by eleven inches tall but it makes more sense usually for something like this to be the landscape portrait which is eight and a half tall and eleven inches wide so I'm gonna then say okay then I'm gonna go view show grid so on the menu bar view and then show grid now this gives a grid here. This won't show if you print it or if you make it into a JPEG and you want to email it home to your parents to show them your work, which would be an excellent addition on the assignment. So try and email this home. But um, it is really handy when you are drawing with a pen tool. Okay, so my first name happens to be Henry, so I'm just going to do Henry. But you got to kind of spatially understand where you are going with things. So you kind of have to start and finish. You cannot use the line tool because if I do this and then I go like this with the line tool and I go like that, it can all look just fine, but then it won't fill, okay? Because they're all completely different objects, so you can't then fill it with a color. So it's really important not to do it with the line tool. You need to use the pen tool. And with the pen tool, you're just going to click and then move your mouse without your finger on it and then click and click, 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 click. And you gotta understand where you're going spatially so what it's gonna look like. You gotta kinda picture it in your head. Then I'll take the black arrow tool to click away and then I'll start again. Pen tool. And I'm going to go click, 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 click. And each time I'm clicking and moving and then clicking, I'm not keeping my finger down on the mouse. Now, this is a hard one. A lot of people have a hard time with an N because you got to kind of picture it in your head spatially where you got to go. All right, then you get to ones like this where you have to do an R. So again, you got to picture it in your head. But here, you'd like to have a curve here. But just imagine it with a curve and put a point there. And you want to use kind of not too many points. And I'll come back to that in a minute after I do my Y. And click move click move now here's where it's interesting see this point when I click on it or click and drag over it it turns blue that means that one is activated and the rest ones are white in the middle so it means this is the only one activated and when I click off of it I want you to quickly peek up here and see what that says but when I highlight one point just one point notice it changed so depending on what your tool you're on this property section up here changes all the time but I'm gonna use this convert anchor to smooth okay and then I'm gonna take another pen tool and what am I gonna do here now 
you guessed it, I'm going to grab the white arrow tool. The black arrow tool is for selecting the entire thing. The white arrow tool is for selecting one point. And I'm going to click on that one point and I'm going to make it smooth. And then I'm going to click the middle one. I'm going to hold the shift key down and I'm going to click the second one and that allows me to select both. And there's this really cool thing, object, compound path, make, and it puts a hole in it. Now, those are all pretty easy letters, except for the R was a little bit tricky. Let's look at some harder ones. I'm going to use the grid, especially for this one. I'm going to click here, click here. So I'm going to go diagonally down, zigzag, and I'm going to give myself a little space, a little space up there, a little space there, a little space there, and then I finish on the one I started on, just like I always do. You finish on the one you started on. And I take my white arrow tool, and I drag over those two, make them smooth, drag over those two, make them smooth. And there you have an S. Okay, get the idea? Draw your letters for your name. Now, what's nice is, I just drag, selected them all by dragging over them with the black arrow tool, and then I can just move them around. And now I put it in the middle. I'm just going to close this for now, minimize that for now. And you can see the spacing is are a bit of an issue. I think it looks better if you got even amount of spacing. And then if you want, you could start to mess with the white arrow tool and then change some things a little. Like watch this, I could bring this out here, then I could go on that one and bring that one in. See how they fit together then? If I want to do it even more, okay, then I could take these two and move them over, and I could take those two and then I could take that one, and I'm using the arrow key here on my keyboard, and I could take those two Again, arrow key on my keyboard, try and get the same amount out as the other ones. And then I could take these two, I could drag that over this way, take that point, and I already used my arrow key again. So you can see how you can mess with that a bit. Then, when you're happy with it, then you gotta pick your colors. And you go in here, and you could do yellow. You can do whatever you want. Do red, and if you want, you can do a line color, but I'm not gonna do a line color. I'm gonna actually turn my line color off. And remember, if you do want a line color, you can increase the thickness. But I'm gonna do something instead. Until there's no line color. I'm gonna group this, go control G, Control C and Control V. And then I'm going to take the one in the back and I'm going to make that black. Oops. I hit the switcher because I put the black on the line instead of the fill. So I need to bring the fill forward. And then I just offset it a little and we just gave it a cool drop shadow. And there you go, it jumps out at you a lot more. If I'm happy with that, I'm going to group it again. Control G. And now I might resize it. I think it's a bit too big for my overall picture. So I'm going to resize it. If I want to resize it with aspect ratio, which means the same amount it gets thinner, the same amount it gets shorter, I hold the shift key down. If I don't want to do that and I want to fatten it up or thin it out a bit and get it taller, which I think I do, I can just grab the corners. If I want to rotate it, I go near the corner till you see that double arrow. And if I make a mistake and I don't like it, I just go Control Z, Edit Undo. Okay? So there's my Henry. Then I'm going to draw a background around it. And I'm just going to use a pen tool again. And you'll notice it's covering it up, 
But don't worry, we'll deal with that in a second. Now, I'm just doing the zigzaggy background, but you can do a lot of different things, and I'll show you a couple choices. So this one, I'm just going to make this one white. And I'm actually going to change my line color to that same red. And then I'm going to right-click on it, arrange, and send to back. Then I'm going to thin it out a bit. So it's not too much bigger than my name. And then I'm going to go Control C and Control V. And I'm going to make this one a little bit bigger. And I'm going to right click, arrange, send to back. Except this one, I'm going to fill with red. And this one, I might make my line color black. So that's looking pretty good. Overall, if I'm happy with it, I could resize it a bit. Now, then after that, you are required to make, put four pictures on uh, that have something to do with you. Now me, I love skiing and mountain biking. So before we do that, we should make sure we save this and we should save it often because your teachers are good but if you forget to save and your computer crashes there's nothing they can do about it so save often and what's the easiest way to save control s now if you haven't saved it in the right place make sure you save it in the right place at your school your teacher will tell you where your folder is and where you should do it i suggest you put it in a folder that organizes it. I always have folders for computers, Illustrator, and then this was uh, a self-reflection uh, or a personal reflection, so we call it self and it's for intermediate students, so that's how I named it and I put it in there. Personal reflection. Save. And this is just a dialog box for saving. Don't worry about this, you just hit OK. Now, where do you get pictures from? You go to Google or if you were to talk to your teacher about this ahead of time or after the fact, you could email pictures to yourself and then get them off your email. Or you could get it if you happen to have Facebook. You could get it off your Facebook if that's allowed by your teachers, but you'll have to ask your teacher those questions. So I'm just going to show you both of those, how you do that. You go to google.ca, then you click on the images button that's up here. So I go right click, save picture as, and I want to put it in the same folder. So I'm going to my documents. This will depend on where you're at. And I put it in computers and illustrator and then self intermediate. And I'm going to go uh, skiing images and I'm going to go save. Okay. Then I do that three more times, but I'm only going to show you one how to do it. So I go back to my Illustrator and I go File and Place. And because I'm already saved in this folder, it should find it immediately. If not, you've got to go through your directory, find it in the right way again. And I'm going to grab that one and I hit Place. Now it's really big. So I've got to move it to the side till I can get to a corner handle. And the best thing is always hold the Shift key because you don't want to make people short and fat or too tall and skinny. You always want to keep the aspect ratio of the picture the same by holding the shift key down. And then I'm going to make this picture about maybe a little bigger than that. So now I'm going to take a pen and I'm just going to do kind of what I was doing before and I'm going to make with the background. I'm just going to grab, make a little fancy little shape. And again, I'm going to hold, click on this to select it with the black arrow tool. I'm going to hold the shift key to select more than one thing. And I'm going to go object, clipping mask, and make. Now, the 
problem is I wanted to put that exact shape behind it and make to make it look really cool. So I'm just going to go Control Z a couple times, or only once. I'm going to go Control C and Control V, and I'll save this for later. Then I can drag over both again, or click on one, hold the Shift key, click on the second one. Object, Clipping Mask, and Make. Then I take this one, make it a little bit bigger. And I go right click on it, arrange, and send the back. And I just move it over a little with my arrow key till I'm happy with it. And might as well group it. Control G. And then I could put one there and one there and one there. And you, you have lots of opportunity for creativity. Um, so like look, this is how I did this background. I'm just going to move this off to the side. Down here is an ellipse tool, if you wanted to do it like that. And make that one white. Click on it with a black arrow tool. Right click, arrange, send to back. Control C to copy, Control V to paste. Make this one bigger. Holding the shift key, making it bigger makes way more sense. Right click, arrange, send the back. Moving it with my arrow keys. Then this one, I could take the eyedropper tool and get that black, that red color. You know, and then I could do it again and make a white one or a blue one or whatever I wanted. So, you know, there's also a, underneath, if I click and hold, there's a rounded rectangle tool you could use. Um, a polygon tool you could use and if you click once with the polygon you can say how many sides you want on it so there's so many choices and I'm just gonna drop back on the original Mrs. Verbeek's original and we're gonna look at hers so see how we're doing compared to now there she's got some letters She's got her letters all neat together. She's got a drop shadow on the letter. She's got a background behind it, another background that was right click, arrange, sent to back. And she's got her pictures that are grouped with her background that goes behind it that's similar colors to that. And she's got four of them. But then where do these stars come from? You could make these stars and shapes, but there's actually, I'll just click back on my one, there's actually a lot of symbols. So if I click here where the swatches are, you go to the symbols that doesn't look like very many symbols you said there's lots of symbols I can grab that I can take that so that's a paint splatter but look at that on the bottom corner there's way more so explore these there's even one on sushi now I don't know why there's a symbol thing on sushi but there is now the interesting thing though you can't change symbols at all unless you do something if you want to change the symbol, you must break the link. And then it became a drawing object, and look, all of a sudden, I can make it red, although the line is red. And then I could right-click, arrange, send it back. So there I have a paint splatter. So, so many things you could do in Adobe Illustrator. It's a fantastic and fun program to learn and, and explore come up with something cool doesn't need to look exactly like this doesn't have to have the jagged edges you decide on what you want but add some symbols add four pictures that tell us something about you and get your name in the middle and then add some cool colors just a small thing about colors when colors are close to each other on the color wheel right it's it feels good but when they're opposite each other on the color wheel it really jumps out and grabs you and you can you can think about many of the sports teams like right here I'm using the Los Angeles Laker colors purple and yellow are right across from each other on the color wheel so they're complementary colors and they work really well together same with uh, red and blue work very well together Christmas red and green work really well together think about colors that work well together try not to do too many colors you know a general rule is three or four colors works the best on a, on a page 
but it's art. Rules are meant to be broken in art. So, have some fun with this, and thanks for watching.